Welcome back to the lab. Charging batteries can be pretty complex, but it is not impossible. Today we're going to try our hand at designing a circuit capable of charging a series string of four lead acid batteries. The top level requirements are this, up to one amp charging current, a float charge voltage of 13.6 volts per battery. The supply isn't responsible for balancing the batteries, but it is responsible for providing the power required to charge them in a reasonable amount of time. Let's dive in. This is one of those tasks that falls deep into the this is something that has been done before category. We could do what we did last time, roll our own power supply, roll our own control loop, we did that in the old UPS, but I think there's an easier path. First of all, there are off-the-shelf battery chargers, two of them specifically from analog devices that can support our output voltage of almost 60 volts with four lead acid batteries in series, and they both look pretty neat. One has a maximum power point tracker for solar applications and the other is a simple buck boost power supply, but both are pretty expensive. These ICs are fairly complex with a lot of features to, well, not blow up your batteries. Some of these features include automatic charge termination, bad battery detection, and thermal runaway detection for the battery pack. Those are all great features. I just don't think we need them. For lead acid batteries, which is our plan, if you're using the right kind, it's fine to float charge them forever. We are not charging lithium ion, okay? We don't need to over engineer this circuit because, well, the control IC costs around $14 in small quantities. That's the cost of a microcontroller, and a good one at that. So before we kick this part to the curb, let's just think, let's think for a moment about some of the great features that linear tech thought that we might need, and I don't think we do. After all, they implemented these features for a reason, and this is still a lead acid battery charger, so let's not be uh, careless. This is a buck boost converter that uses synchronous rectification, has 0.5% voltage accuracy, and then some looser current accuracy. There's some internal timeouts to detect bad batteries and a temperature monitor baked in. It has charge modes for different battery chemistries, uses external FETs, and that all seems fine. In fact, it seems like this controller incorporates many features that we would otherwise pull into our microcontroller. Perhaps we even should implement some of that monitoring and error handling in our microcontroller. Could be interesting, but I don't know that we necessarily need this IC. Here's what we know about the system. There's a 24 volt supply that will charge our batteries. All that power is coming in at 24 volts and the battery pack voltage is anywhere between 54.4 volts when being float charged to 30 volts under full load when the batteries are nearly empty if we're using some pretty crusty car batteries. It's important to note that our battery voltage is always above the input voltage, even in the worst case. That is convenient. That is very convenient because it enables the use of a simple boost converter. No need for buck boost. Nice. Okay, so what current might we need? Realistically, I think that 100 amp hour batteries is pretty unrealistic because they're expensive. But even if we go with 100 amp hours, a one amp charger could get those batteries fully charged in about, yikes, five days? Yeah, that's pretty slow. I'm guessing we'll use something in the range of 35 to 55 amp hours. Seems a little more realistic. And that would let us charge a pack made of 55 amp hour batteries from 0% to full charge in about 2.3 days. The faster our batteries are charged, the less efficient the charging process will be. So this is one of those races that we don't really need to win. In fact, the slower that this charging process can take place, the more efficient it'll be, the better that'll be, assuming that the batteries get fully charged before the next power outage. By the way, four 55 amp hour batteries would give a nominal energy store of 2.64 kilowatt hours. Nice. 35 amp hours gets us around 1.7, which I think is still fine. That's like run your fridge for like eight to 13 hours kind of territory. Not a bad place to be. That can be very helpful for an extended power outage. Like charge it up from a generator and then run it overnight when you want to be a little quieter. Seriously, having this kind of energy storage for emergency situations or during an extended power outage, that would be very helpful. This kind of capacity at my fingertips could be a huge help in a number of situations. Like, I could throw this thing in my car if I'm doing some work remotely off the grid somewhere and run power tools for a few hours without needing to turn on the car or risk over discharging the battery I'm about to use to get home. Like, I don't wanna drain my car battery to run some tools, but that's enough dreaming, right? We need to get energy into these batteries before we can use it. All that to say, one amp charging is a bit on the slow side, but it could be sufficient. 
I'll shoot for more, but one amp charging seems like a good minimum bar, and I think that design goal makes sense. What's the plan then? A one amp charge into lead acid batteries is basically nothing, which means that type current regulation isn't very important. Like, we could have 100% tolerance on that, well, we don't want to charge it to zero, but we could go 100% over that current limit and our batteries wouldn't even start to break a sweat. We could probably pump 20 amps into these batteries without them breaking a sweat. So my plan, and hear me out on this one, is to use the MIC2171, which is a boost converter. Just regular old boost converter. Nothing fancy about it. This thing has the power transistor integrated into the package, and it only costs $5 in small quantities. That is a huge step in the right direction. That's not what gets me excited though. What gets me excited about using this controller to establish battery charging is that the transistor is integrated into that switch from power supply controller, which means that microchip has a lot of control over the series resistance of that FET. What they do internally is monitor the voltage dropped across that transistor and use this voltage to perform peak current limiting in a highly integrated package. Can you see where I'm going with this? Basically, we just take this converter Set the output voltage to our float voltage, 15.4 volts. The internal current limit cuts out at two and a half amps at every cycle, and there are internal thermal protections as well. So basically, the current limit will just happen automatically when the batteries are well below 55 volts, and then the charge current will linearly taper from around two amps to around half an amp as the battery voltage increases. That last little bit is where our design will really shine, a graceful transition from current limiting to voltage regulation as we enter float charge mode. To make a long story short, all we need to do to charge our batteries is enable this power supply. I wanna make sure that we can keep an eye on voltage and the charge current as well. We need to remember that our software took on some responsibility. It needs to use that information. It needs to use the voltage and current to throw a few critical errors. First, we need to throw a fault if there's current entering the batteries, but the voltage isn't changing. If the batteries are charging too slowly or too quickly, if the effective battery capacity is too low to really work, we need to add a charge cycle timeout as well to make sure that we don't boil the batteries dry and have the charge terminate after the charge current falls below a software defined threshold. I know that we can float charge forever, but if we have a little more precise control, that will enable the use of AGM batteries as well. I'm not sure how I feel about the switch mode power supply controller hitting its peak current limit for two consecutive days and using a MOSFET in an application with only 10 volts of margin. In this context, 10 volts of margin is still 18%, but still, it makes me nervous. I like margin. I set up a quick LT SPICE sim, and this is showing a similar circuit, though a slightly different controller due to a SPICE model availability. At any rate, they are very similar controllers, and one's actually a drop-in replacement for the other. This one just is rated for the less current. I hinted at this before, but I think that thermal design is going to be a really big consideration here. I don't want to hit the temperature protection limit of this controller, because not only would that slow down our charging process, it would make me real sad and our controller wouldn't last as long. I don't want to be sad. One mitigation might be implementing the suggested current limit circuit, which is called out in the datasheet, or at least putting the components down on the board even if we don't plan to use it. Granted, driving the enable signal with PWM rather than simple on-off control will likely achieve the same effect. Implementation details aside, the power consumed in this part is not neglectable. Peaks of up to 150 watts are being absorbed by the switch mode power supply controller because of the switching losses in that FET. Zooming in a little more, we can see the output current dropping as voltage increases and the average power absorbed by the switch mode power supply controller is actually pretty reasonable. Only a few hundred milliwatts, so that looks pretty great to me. The power supply that we've just designed looks neat. There are a couple details that I'll still need to investigate, but all things considered, this should be able to charge up a battery pack in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Something between 15 and 75 hours, depending on the capacity of our pack. This charger doesn't do any balancing, it's just all about translating up to 120 watts from the 24 volt bus and shoving that into the battery pack. Depending on what type of battery is used, balancing might not even be required. So our battery charger is done. Nice! I've got some dreaming to do. If you like what you saw today, consider subscribing to be notified of our future videos where we will design the battery balancing circuit and the fan monitor circuit. If you'd like to support the channel, consider checking out the products that we featured today through our Amazon affiliate links in the description. Really helps us out a lot. Thank you. I don't know about you, 
but I think the battery chargers are awesome, and this one is no exception. If you're excited to start charging some batteries by testing out this circuit, let me know by hitting the like button on this video, finding us on Twitter, or leaving a comment letting us know what you enjoyed. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching it for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!